Hi everyone, my name is Yehuda Manasha Goldstein. I run a little thing in Israel called Merkaz Hadut. It's about spreading and strengthening Yiddishkeit and Torah knowledge and biblical knowledge and true religion according to the Bible. So I want to ask you a question. The question is, let's say that we're now in a time where heaven, everybody has uh, passed the historical moment where there's been the rising of the dead, raising of the from the grave. And the judgment has happened, and um, now those people who qualified to go to heaven are now in heaven, and those people who went to hell went to hell. As let's let's just give uh, Christianity a little chance. Uh, <clears throat> so let's say now you're in heaven. Uh, since the Torah, that is the instructions of life given in the first five books of the Bible, called the Torah called the Chumash, Chumash Chemish uh, Sifre. These are the books written by Moshe Rabbeinu. And um, in these five books are all the 613 commandments according to the Jewish covenant that were given to the Jews when they left Egypt. And all the other Gentiles of the world, they didn't receive the Jewish covenant. But now let's say we're now in heaven. Since that eternal covenant with the Jews is eternal, that means that now we're in heaven. Let's say it's the year 6,550. We're already 550 years into the seventh millennium. And we're all in heaven. We're all enjoying the Sabbath. As one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like a day. So the six days of the week are, and then the seventh day is like Sabbath, the seventh day. Remember the seventh day and make it holy. Keep it holy and rest and don't do any work in it. So now we're in the seventh millennium, and we're in heaven, we're enjoying bliss. Um, so the question is, what are we going to be doing in heaven? You know, sipping Mai Tais on the beach, watching the moonlight, what, what are we going to be doing? We're going to have a Wii, Wi-Fi, Sony PlayStation, Internet, you know, YouTube, Facebook, all that stuff. But since the Torah is eternal... That means even in heaven, the Torah and the commandments are going to be obligatory to, to keep them. For instance, tefillin, which in English it's called phylacteries, or what do you call them? Um, and mezuzahs, and kosher, and family purity laws, and uh, keeping the Sabbath. I mean, look in Isaiah 66, you, you see that uh, it's written, In the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, uh, all flesh shall come to worship on the Sabbath and no moons. So even in the heavens, when heaven, what's the time of heaven, uh, the Sabbath is going to be you know, something to keep. So it would make sense that the Gentiles would learn how to keep the Sabbath if they want to go to heaven. You know, since the verse says, uh, that there will be Sabbath keeping in the new heavens. All right, so now the Christian faith says, you know what, all the laws, they're all done away with. There's only one law that means believe in the Son of God and love love your neighbor, self, love God and love your neighbor. The thing is, the laws of the Jewish covenant are, are spelling out how the definition of, what the definition of love really is. For instance, theft. You're not allowed to steal from your neighbor. Uh, you're not allowed to take your neighbor's wife. You're not allowed to hurt him. You're not allowed to kill him, shedding blood, murder rather. And all these things delineate and explain and rule on what love means. In other words, you can't just say, oh, I love you, love you, love you. But you, but then break the laws which delineate what love is. So those laws will be kept also heaven and those people who are wicked ones who are now in this time in this lifetime are not keeping them refusing to keep them heaven is not really a happy place for them it's it's not like you know a party for them so they're not interested in living that life now they won't be interested in living that life in the future so god wipes them out just like he did in the flood so since the covenant of the jewish people with god is eternal means last forever and ever and ever and ever makes sense that it, it's not allowed to be compromised 
and it won't be compromised in the future, so why do Christians think it's it's done away with now? See, that's the difference between Christianity and Judaism. Judaism says the law is good. It was, is, and always will be. And even in the New Testament, you can find hints to that. Like, I think it's Romans, oh, wow, well, it's been the years since I went to this, but Romans 3.26, maybe, I don't know, check it out. Uh, the law is good and just, all right? Um, never mind what the New Testament says about the law. The point is, the Old Testament says about the law that it's forever. The law is forever. It's a covenant forever and ever. It's for all the generations. So in heaven, we're going to be keeping the, the Torah, the laws. So why do Christians come up with this idea that you don't have to keep it now, and it won't be kept in the future when it's clearly written in the Bible that the, that the Torah, the covenant, will be kept in the future. It's the eternal covenant. So, since that eternal covenant, see, make my point clear. Since the eternal covenant is eternal, Christians don't have a case to say you don't have to keep any of those laws anymore. For instance, circumcision, it says it shall be for all your generations. Now, these are laws specifically to Jewish people. And Gentiles were not under this covenant of the Jewish covenant because they're not Jewish. So those people who can convert and do convert to Judaism, who take upon themselves the covenant of the Jewish people, accept upon themselves all of those commandments, including circumcision, Shabbat, keeping Shabbat, keeping kosher, all the laws that are given in the Torah. And those laws are always going to be forever and ever and ever and ever. So there's no getting around it. So it's a mystery why the Christians can come and say, you know, all you have to do to get to heaven and have eternal life is believe in the Son of God. Well, that Son of God was a Jew. And according to the Christian faith, he didn't break any of the commandments. And therefore, he said, follow me. So wouldn't it make sense to follow? And, and if he's your Lord, keep those commandments and follow them and don't break them. Because if he was a Jew and he kept the commandments and he, he was he kept according to the Jewish covenant, Therefore, he, uh, you have to follow him and do what he said. So if you do that, you will keep the commandments and you will keep the covenant. But, but the point I'm trying to make is, as a Gentile, you don't have to keep the covenant of the Jewish people. All you have to do is keep the seven laws of Noah. Since Noah was the predecessor of the, the promulgator of the entire human race after the flood, and he received the commandments from his father and father and father, all the way back to Noah, uh, pardon me, all the way back to Adam, the first man. And he was saved, and his wife and his three sons and their four wives, so there were eight people on the ark, four men, four women. And they, all the other people died because uh, there was a flood 15 cubits above the highest mountain on earth. And God wiped out the human race because they didn't keep a moral uh, lifestyle. They were... Like you see today, you see immoral things that they push on you and say, no, it's it's right, we're allowed to do it, we have we have rights for doing the, what we want to do. And we, you know, they legalize this, they legalize that, but it's murder and uh, having many other gods and uh, you know, lawlessness and not keeping a proper uh, judicial system and, and cruelty to animals and, you know, homosexuality or bestiality or incest or... Uh, uh, you know, those moral laws are what God wiped out people for because they didn't want to keep them. So God says, well, okay, so what am I going to do? Let eternity go on and on and on and on and on and let this immoral thing exist in my creation? No, God didn't have a desire to, to, to let that exist. I mean, how can you have that for eternity? So, so God had to take the Etch-A-Sketch, turn it upside down and shake it to, to start again. Uh... So oh, that's what he took. He took Noah, who was righteous in his generation. He, 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 uh, Noah was righteous. He started again to create the human race over again with Noah. And he reinstituted those laws to all of his sons and their sons' sons. So all the people in the world today are all children of Noah. We're all descendants going back, back, back. We're all part of the same human race because we're all part of the same family. Now, 14 generations after Noah, God chose the Jewish people uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons. Those 12 sons had many children. They went to Egypt and became slaves for a few hundred years, came out, and they received the Torah on Mount Sinai in the year 2448. 
after creation. Now we're in the year 5771, which is 2011, according to the Gentile cycle. So, look. So if you're Gentile, you have to keep the seven laws of Noah according to the moral uh, system of, of, of righteousness that has been existence, in existence for all time. But the Jewish covenant was given to the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, Isaac and Jacob 14 generations after Noah when they came out of Egypt. Now, that covenant is eternal with the Jewish people and then God has chosen the Jewish people as his um, uh, emissaries or ambassadors of holding the torch, the light of the truth. God's Torah is pure, perfect, and good. And God gave his uh, righteousness to a group of people who agreed to 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 go according to that Torah and to share the light with the whole people. So nobody is supposed to or must convert to Judaism unless they really you know must do it for their own. They they want to keep the Jewish covenant, and maybe there are people who are Jewish but don't know it. For instance, in Russia, the government squashed all religious observance, including Judaism, especially Judaism. And they try to institute, you know, uh, communism and annihilating all religious beliefs. So a lot of people in Russia, they hid their Judaism because they were killed for it. And even today, if you go there, you can find people who, who, uh, who are Jewish, but they don't even know it. And they're hiding their Judaism. And even today, they're afraid, even though the ban has been lifted and it's permitted to now practice open religion. But they're still hiding in their old uh, habitual, you know, fears. They don't have to. But anyway. <clears throat> so now let's go back to the beginning where I was talking about heaven is now instituted. We're now in the time of eternity, and the eternal covenant still exists, and we're still obligated to keep it. And the Gentiles come into heaven. They see Peter at the pearly gates, and they see God, and they see that Jew who led them to the new religion of, of Christianity, and they say, hey, what are you doing keeping Judaism, guys? What, I came here, what, you want me to keep the law now? You know, what do I have to do that for? You said before I wasn't supposed to. No. That's what men did. They said you don't have to keep it. It's a whole falsified religion. But the point is, everybody who wants to go to heaven has to keep a set order of commandments, or else they're not really in order over there. They're not really connected to the... Uh, to the system that will 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 be so the eternal covenant today is supposed to be observed and it will be observed in the future so the point is keep it don't try to throw it under the carpet or sweep it away or annihilate it or forget about it or uh, abrogate it because it's not you can't it's not supposed to be abrogated it's not supposed to be deleted and selected which laws will be kept which ones so if you're Gentile, you don't have to keep any of the Jewish commandments except the seven laws of Noah. And some of those overlap and are included in the Ten Commandments, which were given to the Jewish people. For the commandments that are relevant to the Jewish people that are also shy to, also relevant to the Gentiles are don't murder, do not have other gods, do not commit sexual immorality, do not steal, you know. But the seven commandments of Noah are not exactly the same as the Ten Commandments that are that everybody knows about, uh, that you find in Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy 6. All right, so I hope I made myself a little bit clearer. I hope I tried to wipe away some of the confusion and to, to explain the Jewish obligation and the Gentile obligation to what how to live a moral life and what we, what we look forward to in the future. We don't look for, forward to something that will be, you know, uh, uh, like... A playground or a beach all you know just free for all no lawless no laws and order disorderliness so there will be orderliness in the future and we have that same it's written what what we're obligated to, to do today so we have this information available and that's what's going to be in existence in the future so invest in yourself learn about these laws and Put Christianity away. It's it's ridiculous. It's it's contrary to the truth. Okay. Anyway, all the best and Yehi Adonai No Marin Rabbeinu Melech Hamashiach Olam Live Forever King Messiah. All the best.